What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Rainy here with RTS Mobile Gaming bringing you a dynamite video today. We're playing the Lord of the Rings Rise to War Tactics Evolve Season 7. We're talking about the Undying. I'm going to be comparing two different builds that I've been running on him for the past couple days. And I'll show you two different meta reports where I dominate some PvP meta commanders. Into the video, here we go. And I will be live streaming, by the way, tonight, if you're watching this day of release, I'll be live streaming tonight at 8.30 p.m. Central or 2.30 a.m. UTC. Don't miss the stream. It's going to be glorious, okay? All right, so first up, we have a fight against Sauron's Gilgalad. Saruman is with the Isengard Mega Group here. I've been fighting against him all season. Great PvP. Okay, he's got a fairly competent Gilgalad with some four-star gold uh, equipment and five-star purple equipment. He's got a fairly standard build, running Kingly Kin, uh, Exorbitance, and then we've got High King as well as Elven Leader and a Pointed Icicle for the stun. Okay, um, troop-wise, he is using Elite Abilities, Tier 1 Elite Abilities. Um, he's got Light Armor for anti-damage from melee, okay? Light Armor, anti-damage from melee, and then more Light Armor, anti-damage from melee. So I will be dealing... Uh, 15% reduced damage with my melee units, uh, which will definitely help him in the long run. I would like to see the Sentinels probably running Dispersion to get a little more damage output, but you know what? This is a very tanky and defensive build, okay? Into the Undying. The reason you're watching this, uh, this video, I've decided to use fairly humble gear. I stuck to purples uh, with a Pursuit accessory, okay? So, of course, Cutlass, right? Anti-burn chest anti mandis helmet and then pursuit with tactical mark and plus attack here the build is pretty straightforward i'm maxing out the r5 tree second wind fanaticism chilling uh chilling edge and then i'm maxing out the bottom r0 tree all right undead commander dishearten and nimbleness and then all my extra points i'm divvying up between the other skills because i want these different damage instances so the uh, plague will give me anti-healing starting in round three around earlier Right, Delayed Plague will just be some damage later on. A few points in Undertaker for some splash. A few points in the R3 tree just to gain these debuffs that the enemy has to dispel and make it tougher for them to fight against me, okay? Um, all in all, the elite units that I'm using here, I'm not using elite crushers. They're just standard crushers. No need to use them as elites right now. Okay, for the Reapers, I am using the Heart Seeker ability to give them 50% chance of double strike. I'm also using plus 10 attack from Orcs, okay? For the Half Trolls, I am using Significant uh, Assault, which is going to deal bonus damage to the enemy when they cannot recover HP. As you know, we'll start in round 3 and last for the rest of the fight. So for rounds 3 through 10, the Half Trolls will deal... 24% um, bonus damage. If this was maxed out, it would be 30% bonus damage, all right? So a very strong uh, complementary build for the Undying. Overall troop damage output, you can clearly see that the Reapers dominated the battlefield. That double strike is so powerful. Uh, in combination, right, the Half Trolls did pretty good damage as well to assist the Reapers and help share some of the damage taken. The enemy... Majority of the damage actually came from the Heralds, probably because I one-shot these Sentinels. We'll see how that played out. The Reapers definitely had a hand to play here, okay? Into the report itself. We'll spend 10 seconds on the report. Then we're going to jump to the other build that I'm going to show you against a Sunnend. Yes, get excited! I'm just moving my thing around. Okay, uh, let's get right into it, guys. We'll, we'll cover round one, then I'll jump all the way to round seven. And we'll just see what the damage looks like, okay? So here in round one, I'm sucking away 140 focus from Gilgalad, okay? What we've got here is a fantastic Delayed Plague triggering White Council, Attack triggering White Council, um, Auto Attack here coming in from the Undying, okay? Hitting two out of three targets with Splash, Damage, Morgul Poison being dodged, because of course the Undying doesn't gain the Pursuit buff. Um, and then we have the half trolls hitting for 3229. That's being mitigated by White Council. Okay, so it's really not a whole lot of damage there, that's for sure. And then my own avoidance is coming into effect here. He's dodging 70% of attacks received. I'm dodging 60% of physical damage received. So it's really a battle of 
of the uh, of the vo avoidance builds, which is pretty funny. Uh, okay, so I attack. No double strike here in round one. Hitting the Sentinels for 13k. One stack of fanaticism from Undying skill set. All right. Um, the Herald's hitting decently here on the Reapers. Okay, even though I avoided the first hit, I took damage on the second one. And let's just drop, let me just drop down. Let's just drop down to like round five or seven. Okay, let's just check out round, let's check out round four. Let's do round four, then round five. Let's do round five. I changed my mind. <laughs> Here in round five, guys, the Reapers are gain, gain plus 70% damage dealt. Okay, nobody can heal anything, so my half trolls have 24% increased damage dealt. Um, the half trolls are looks like only 1452 left alive. They're hitting for 6,000 plus a 5666 bleed, plus 25% damage from fanaticism. So they're at plus 49% damage overall. Not too shabby. And then the reapers, they are at plus 95% damage dealt. And they didn't even get a clean shot on the Sentinels. Let's see what it looks like in round six. Let's see if I can get a clean shot with maximum damage rolls from the Reapers. Here we go, ladies and gents. How many Reapers are left alive? I don't know. Let's find out. That's an important metric. 4172 Reapers left alive, ladies and gentlemen. A total of plus 100% bonus damage to the Reapers, plus double strike, hitting for 29k in round six. Very, very beautiful. I love it. So, obviously, uh, Reapers against range. It's not the most competitive build. You may appreciate this next build a little bit more. It's a little bit more expensive from a gold standpoint, but it's much higher level on the theory crafting ladder, okay? So this next build is against a very, very powerful Sun End running, again, five-star gold, four-star gold helmet, five-star gold weapon, and five-star purple uh, chest and accessories, running a very strong R5 uh, bottom R0 tree build. This is the same build I like to run, okay, except instead of putting points in dagger ladder, put points in feint. Um, for these particular skills, he is running divide and conquer on the halberdiers. He is running solid metal on the swan knights, and we are running dispersion on the mortal arbalas, okay. So this is not an anti-range damage build. This Undying build here is relying on the same skill set, but it's relying on the Wraith-Vanguard combination in conjunction with Half Trolls to really bear down and bring a ton of damage to the fight. All right, so the uh, Wraiths are going to be using Reverence, uh, or sorry, Perseverance, which is going to stack up going into round four. It'll be plus 36% damage at max level would be 40. Okay. That stacks nicely with the Corrupting Touch for defense penetration, all right? And then, of course, the Vanguards are going to give them a plus 24% damage bonus every round after round one, making them very strong. I'm running Blessed Armor on the Vanguards, so the Vanguards take dramatically reduced damage in the first three rounds of the fight, okay? And the Half Trolls are here, again, with significant assault to deal some damage when the enemies cannot recover HP, okay? How did this play out? Let's take a quick look at the damage output. Similar damage output from the Half Trolls as you saw previously, 55k or so, plus or minus. The Vanguards did their job tanking like a boss, and the Wraiths with the bulk of the damage here uh, really adding up as they move on into the fight. A lot of pew pew from the Wraiths. Okay. So let's take a look at what these rounds really look like, because this is a powerful sun in build. Very powerful sun in build. All right, here we go into round one, ladies and gentlemen. We'll look at round one, then we'll jump to uh, round four and see what that looks like. You can see what the healing nukes look like here. All right, so here in round one, the Undying is auto-attacking for next to no damage, but at least he's getting some pew-pews in there. Why not? Okay. Um, the Swan Knights hitting the Half Trolls. The Half Trolls hitting the Swan Knights for 46, 80 deep wounds on the Swannies. Here comes the Wraiths coming in. They are going to be penetrating the enemy defense. Um, ironically, Wraiths defense uh, defense reduction is based on the Swan Knight's base defense. So it really doesn't remove as much defense as you might think. Um, 
but it still is going to help me by re removing 6.5 per stack, okay? And I am going to be gaining the Fanaticism stack as it moves. So going into round 4, I'll have plus 56% damage um, output from the Wraiths. The Vanguard's dealing decent damage as well, okay? And now we are going to see what happens in round 2 now that the Wraiths have more bonus damage. And look at this. This is so interesting. Do you like this? Look at this. Look at this um, beautifulness. So the Undying, since he hits all three targets with his auto attack, is going to be triggering all of the bleeds on the field every round. It's a nice little bit of synergy that will add, you know, 10, 15,000 damage over the course of the fight, okay? Here we go. The Wraith's getting plus 24% damage bonus from the Vanguard's Undead Alley. They are now hitting the Swan Knights for 14-7. This isn't too shabby, guys, considering we're in round two where the Swan Knights have dramatically um, reduced damage received, all right? And the Swan Knights are now down. Now we'll see the real damage start going into round three as I start to pick apart the other targets on the field. All right. So now we're going to be attacking targets that do not have crazy damage uh, reduction. All right. We're going to be attacking the Halberdiers, and we'll be, we will be eventually attacking the Morgul Arbalests. So here's the race hitting the Halberdiers for 18,318. Very, very nice damage output there. Punching them directly in the face. I love it. Reducing their defense. Here we go, baby. All right, into round four, we're going to see the damage fully stacked up here in round four. We're going to see some big healing nukes from the Undying as well, okay? 16, 5, 30 healing nuke on each target. The Wraiths haven't taken that much damage, so their heal is a little bit reduced. And the Wraiths, of course, will have 36% plus damage right there. They will have 20% plus damage from the Fanaticism, okay? So now we're talking about 56% plus damage. Then we have another plus 24, so we're actually at plus 70% damage output right now um, here in round 4. So you're talking about damage output bonus that's similar to the Reapers. The only difference is I don't gain the nice double strike, okay? So that's the big difference in this build. This particular build is definitely more tanky than the Reaper build, uh, but you don't see the double strike capabilities, which are so powerful, okay? And you can just see that damage is so glorious. Let's, you know what, let's drop down. Let's see what the damage looks like in round seven. Let's go down to round seven, okay? You're going to see plus 35% damage from everybody, right? Here we go. The Wraiths are hitting the Morgul Arbalast for 26, 393. Not too shabby. How many Wraiths are left alive? I don't know. Uh, many of them. Most of them are probably left alive at this point. I don't even see them taking damage. Oh, there's a double strike here. Look at that, 29k. Because um, Undead Ally can stack if they don't attack anybody. Very powerful, guys. What a strong build here. Uh, I'm enjoying both of these builds. Again, again this one is kind of high-level theory crafting. We're going for all of the Tactics Evolved Elite Synergy combined with the Undying's ability to stack damage up with Fanaticism. Fanaticism combined with the Wraiths and with the Reapers. Both of these builds complement Fanaticism very well, giving enormous damage later on in the fight and a lot of survivability from the Undead Commander and uh, Nimbleness, Dishearten, right? Reducing damage you received, so... Like and sub, hopefully you guys have enjoyed these videos. Undying is back in the game as a PvP contender. I've been dominating PvP all week. Love you long time. Don't miss a stream. Randy out.